What is up YouTube, I'm Ben Plays Games guys and today I'm back bringing you another MW3 Zombies video. This time I'm bringing you a guide for all of you Warzone and multiplayer guys who want to give MW3 Zombies a go and actually enjoy it for what it's worth. So we're essentially talking about a first time slash beginner player's guide to, to the mode. Um, before we get into that however, let me introduce you guys to today's sponsor, Damn Mods. Dan Mods is a website where you can go for the quickest and safest hard unlocks for all camos in multiple different Call of Duty games, including MW3 this year's game and its mastery camos Interstellar and Borealis. You can also purchase pre-made accounts with camos already unlocked and they will also provide bot lobbies for you to grind out camos and challenges yourself and improve your aim. With thousands of happy customers and an incredible amount of excellent reviews on Trustpilot, you know that you can trust them for a quick and easy service. If you do check them out and you want to purchase some of their services, remember to use code BPG at the checkout for an extra 10% off your order for a maximum saving of $100. Thank you to Dan Mods for sponsoring this video. And finally, before we get into this video, I've noticed from the analytics I have on the screen that 97% of you guys aren't subscribed who watch my videos. I appreciate you all, but I would love it if you took the extra two seconds out of your day to click the like and subscribe buttons, guys, as this really fuels my motivation to keep pumping out MW3 Zombies content for you. Without further ado, though, let's get into the guide. I will point out now that as a first time player you need to go into this game with an open mind. It's not a round based zombies experience so don't expect it to be round based. That's returning this year and also in 2025. Before we do even get into a game of MW3 Zombies I'd like to just do a basic rundown of the mode for you. So essentially you have 3 players maximum per squad with a total of 24 players in a game. You can then squad up with another squad in game to make a total maximum of 6 players per squad. The map is just the Warzone map made zombified, so if you are a Warzone guy, you are a Warzone kid, you understand the map, you know where you're going, which is also useful. The game runs off an X-Fill system, which is very similar to that of DMZ last year. The Story Act mission is the main thing that you probably want to be following through and going through. Perks aren't as important as normal round based maps, however they are still useful. What I mean is you can quite easily go through a game of Modern Warfare Zombies with no perks, but they are also nice to acquire if you can get them. So for the first section of the actual guide, I'm going to speak about the menus on the game. If you understand these already, use the timestamps on the video to get to the actual gameplay. I'm going to break the menus down using various screenshots that I've taken. So let's get into it. So in the lobby we have several different tabs and also sections on this main screen that you'll want to check out. You have the squad fill tab here and if you're a first time player I recommend putting this on as most people in this zombies community are really friendly and will probably be more than happy to help you get started with your game uh, and also if like I say if you're a solo definitely put it on. Secondly we have the story missions here. Once selected, the screen that pops up breaks down your story, acts and missions. I recommend progressing through these as they're really good for XP and every time you complete a mission in-game you require a random perk which is also nice. They're also good for unlocking various useful schematics which we'll get into later. Finally on this screen you have the daily missions window and the XP boosts window which are both very similar to what you will have already seen in Warzone and multiplayer if you played those modes. You also have the start operation deadbolt button here, but don't press that yet as we, this will start a game and we're not quite ready to go into that yet. Next we're going to move on to the gear tab located here. You'll notice that this screen is very similar to last year's DMZ inventory tab and it is essentially that. You firstly have your rucksack, if you've never played the game you will only have a small rucksack but don't worry about that too much as later in the video we'll go into more detail on how to acquire a large one like myself and also some other useful stuff for your games that you can exfil with and then redeploy with next game. The large rucksack can be obtained via lockers, ether nests and also mercenary strongholds and the three plate armor vest can be obtained almost every time when completing a mercenary stronghold. Both of these items are quite essential to the game and make it much more of a fun experience so I highly recommend completing yourself a mercenary camp then a stronghold pretty much as soon as you enter the game. I did forget to mention this, that this is post editing Ben so I'm just throwing it in here but yeah make sure to get yourself these two items. You'll see that I have several items in my rucksack ready for the game. I have two purple ether upgrade tools, a refined ethereum crystal, an elder sigil, a scorcher weapon case and four perks. Those perks being juggernaut, speed cola, stamina up and death perception. Purple ether tools are used to upgrade the tier of weapon when you first enter the game. Weapons have six tiers in this game. These being common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary and also mythical. So common is grey. Uncommon is green, rare is blue, epic is purple, and legendary is gold, and then mythicals like a, 
lighter shade of gold if you like but mythical only applies to wonder weapons not normal guns the wonder weapons currently in the game are the ray gun the wonder off the scorcher and the vr11 the refined ethereum crystal is used to instantly upgrade a gun to pack a punch level 2 you can also get a raw ethereum crystal to instantly pack a punch a gun to level 1 and also a flawless ethereum crystal to instantly pack a punch a gun to level 3 the Elder Sigil is used to access the Dark Aether. I won't touch on this too much this video as it is quite a grind to get to the point of regular Dark Aether visits. Uh, and obviously this guide is for first time players slash beginners. But I also recommend completing one Acts 1, 2 and 3 to learn more about the game before progressing to Act 4 and entering the Dark Aether 2. The Scorcher case is used in game to instantly spawn myself in a Scorcher, giving me the wonder weapon to use for the rest of the game. Currently you can get schematics and craft cases for the Ray Gun, the Scorcher and the Wonder Off. The VR11 unfortunately does not have a schematic yet. Finally you have my perks which are pretty self explanatory. The perks will essentially just grant you the perk from the can when used in game. Moving down the screen you have your loadout. This is where you can equip two weapons, a tactical and lethal grenade and also a field upgrade. Let's start by looking at the field upgrades. Firstly you have the energy mine which will spawn in a small mine that will kill several normal enemies and also do significant damage to bosses within its vicinity when it explodes. Next you have the frenzied guard which in game will replenish your armor and force all enemies in the area to target you for around 10 seconds. However, every kill that you get in those 10 seconds will also replenish your armor. Next you have Healing Aura which heals you and teammates when you're low health. This one can also revive down teammates. Next up we have Frost Blast which essentially freezes the zombies that are close to you and slows down mini bosses. Second to last we have the Aether Shroud which essentially makes you invisible to zombies for a short period of time. And finally we have the Tesla Storm which essentially makes you... As all zombies around you and your teammates that are in close proximity to you will essentially become stunned for the duration of the ability. I would recommend personally using the either Frenzied Guard if your weapon can handle it, or if not, run Healing Aura or Tesla Storm. For your lethal grenade slot, I would equip some sort of explosive nade, whether that be a normal grenade or a Semtex. For a tactical grenade, I highly recommend using decoy grenades as they are essentially monkey bombs without the explosion and can also be replenished at easily quite easily throughout the game at ammo caches when you find them next we get to your guns and you have two slots to take guns into the game you'll notice if this is the first time playing that you have several contraband weapons in the slots when you select them and then also an insured slot that you can use for a custom gun i highly recommend using one of the guns and loadouts on your screen right now if you don't have any of the tyr wsp swarm or lockwood maxed out I recommend using something basic like an assault rifle like the uh, MCW or even an LMG such as the Tack Eradicator as these are both pretty good across the board. But the three weapons on your screen are the meta right now so if you've got any of those three maxed out definitely make those classes that are on the screen for you now um, and jump in with those because they're going to be the most efficient for you and also just help you survive the easiest really. Finally we're ready to get into the gameplay. You will notice when you first get into the game that the deployment is very similar to DMZ. This mode is essentially what DMZ should have been in my opinion. So for those who played DMZ, it will feel very similar. I'm using the wonder weapon in the gameplay for easy mobility, but as a new player you'll want to find yourself an ATV or any other vehicle really around the map to allow yourself easy mobility for getting shit done. So the first thing I decided to do when I got into the game was complete a mercenary camp. Again, like I said earlier, I do recommend you guys getting this done because you need to get yourself a three plate vest and also a large or even medium rucksack just to make your game a lot easier so you can store more items in your inventory and also you can store more plates and put more plates on. Um, as you can see, the mercenary camp is essentially a, a few mercenaries uh, just sort of camping at a really open location. When you complete this, you get the card, the stronghold key, which will let you into one of the mercenary strongholds and you essentially have to hold off at a vault whilst the drill drills into the safe and then the safe will open and that's where you get yourself the three plate armor vest. Like I said as well with the rucksack, look around in the stronghold for lockers. Um, rucksacks have a good chance of spawning inside lockers so that's the first thing we decided to do in the gameplay once again i forgot to commentate over this so this is post editing ben i'm just making sure that i cover everything for you, you first time beginner players uh, because i don't want to miss anything so yeah make sure to do yourself a, a mercenary camp and then a mercenary stronghold firstly as i said before the money system in this game is completely different and the best way to get money throughout the game is via contracts 
In the game plan screen now, I've performed a bounty contract and also a PND device outlast contract, as these are both relatively easy. I would recommend avoiding the raid weapon stash, defend ground station and escort contracts, as they are they're not really the best value for time that they take to complete, or they can actually be quite difficult going into the game for the first time, especially the defend ground station one. That one can be really, really hard to complete, so definitely avoid that at all costs. I then upgraded my guns to pack a punch one. You want to make sure you do this before moving up to the next zone. And if you're not using meta guns like I was in this gameplay, you probably want to do contracts in your current tier until you have enough money to pack a punch to the next tier as soon as you enter it. I'll put the cost of each pack a punch on the screen now for you. As I was using the TYR Akimbo in the gameplay, I did feel confident enough to move to tier two with tier one pack a punch. And I firstly did a deliver cargo contract. This is probably the best value for time contract as you simply have to pick up a cargo truck with some weapons on the back and deliver it to the location that will be marked out on your minima. It's easy as that and the payment is quite decent at 3000 points. You will see in the gameplay that I managed to get very lucky with my reward from this contract as I got a refined ethereum crystal allowing me to instantly pack a punch to tier 2 and with that I moved on to the tier 3 zone. But with that comes the end of this video as when you've completed the story missions and acts most games will end with you visiting the tier 3 zone first and then either fighting the red worm boss or visiting the dark ether. If you guys would like me to make a guide on either the red worm or the dark ether please let me know in the comments. Before we do end this video I also just wanted to mention the point that I've made in other videos. If you found this video via a Google search or YouTube recommendations it would mean the absolute world to me if you took the time out of your day to click onto the video directly if you're on Google um, but also if you're just on YouTube and just press the like and subscribe button. Um, if not no worries I do still appreciate your viewership but yeah thank you guys. Uh, finally also remember I do stream regularly over on my Twitch so make sure to follow over there too. Links are all in the description. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.